Good evening. Whatever it is wherever you are. So of my of my many, many things we're missing. We don't really have any like line highlighting for duos. Let's see. What would be what would be an easy one? So freezing vortex, well, actually probably not that one. Probably, let's see, the blade ones or hmm. I guess they're not the dash. Oh, so this is specifically a um, a cast thing. Hmm. Interesting. That enables it. Okay, so that's something. I mean, probably any. Ah, that's yeah, that's a little bit of a special one. And basically anything that chills. Actually, this is a bad example because right now I've got no allocation for lines here. I might eventually want to do something with this, but an easier target would be these lines here. So that's very concise, but it's not actually going to help us <clears throat> with this stuff. Uh, self laser, okay. So definitely that, and then like probably any any basic <clears throat> so currently we've got nothing on that line what I'd like to do is like an overlaid dash effect an alternating dash effect that might require drawing it twice. Now we had to make our own special expansion for paths, but the, I think the trace part is still fine. All right, so this actually comes down to a line style, I guess. Oh, and actually, if I was looking at that right, it looks like the paths we have might infect multiple line segments. They're probably decoding multiple line segments, though. Okay, that's the style. Yeah, we're gonna need two line styles and two lines. So I guess first to figure out how to do this. Custom lined on off length. Well, we pretty much want even. Calculate the length of the dash is based on the given line thickness. Hmm, that probably a reasonable default. I'm not sure. That would mean if we brightened it up, that would change the or if we thickened it up, that would change the this. And actually, that would not be good because we're going to change them independently. Okay, on off length. I think we should get a constant size. Now I don't think I'm doing anything. <clears throat> I was I was tracing these all the same way. We do have duo arcs here, though. <clears throat> 
Now, we were doing a lot of stuff here. offset this by one cycle. Because these patterns are going to repeat. So if you start with the space. Well, you could, you, I guess we could do like 10, 0, and 0, 10, and vice versa, or something like that. <laughs> All right, so this is, so that's solid, and then uniform. Uh, we're varying color all across these. Still, we have a type and we have a thickness. And then we've got two switches on shape. You have arguments. You have arc arguments. And everything else is going to be that. Now, I guess I could turn this into one giant statement, but that seems maybe a bit much. Now, this actually is going to depend on which which side we're on. I don't know, actually, we're, we're, we're shrunken right now. That might be a problem. That might be a problem. I don't know how to prove it's a problem, though. What environment are we in that we're... We have these so small. Oh, am I doing the whole thing at zero one?
scale size. Can I even get something visible if I try rescaling stuff? So much just to turn into a mini model. There's going to be a whole bunch of coordinates in there. Maybe. Could I do just the arcs and I'm gonna have to do some messy stuff with scale. I guess I really only care about arc from points. Oh, uh, it's size. Almost thought I saw something. <laughs> I'm probably gonna need thicker lines too, huh? And this doesn't care about shape. Everything else is probably actually really small. But I don't know how to frame that. Or how to get a view that is the, the right size. I might have to just draw an arbitrary line just to see if it comes out differently. Okay, well that at least gave it gave us a boundary. Okay, and that's just kind of disappearing as we as we zoom out. Oh. Oh, we've exceeded the exceeded our black square, so I can't drag. Oh, well, there is I'm not sure what some of this stuff is, but there's some dashes all right.
Oh, because we're focused on the armor window. Oh, now we can see it. Yeah, we've got no square, though. Which means I can't pan in general. And yes, we are being limited by our library to integers. I might have to remove this. In the meantime, we've already forked it. All right, so that goes into... dashes. So is this... Okay, so it's not that anything else is putting like just different numbers in there, or they're implemented in terms of broken. Yes, they're implemented in terms of broken of that. Which means we might have problems. Because I find the definition of line style, upgrade that, find whatever code references it. Is that pre-calculating a bunch of stuff? Maybe rescaling everything would be a path, but it's it'd be a very big project right now. And then everybody else is going to complain about it. Yeah, it's too float. Oh, so I'm missing a space there, and that kind of gets into the. Into the buffer. And another one. Probably if we use that, I was going to complain about it too. Uh, so is this to code dashing? Yeah, this is to code dashing. Well, it's a string, so I guess the question is. Uh, DS. So there is decode on off of blah 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 blah. This is well, it also has from float. Oh, we also changed our zoom.
Okay, we can at least see it happening now. Okay, that might even work. But can we do two patterns now? And... Hmm... Now you see, you're gonna have to draw this twice with the different line styles. But we're varying both thickness and color based on a complicated set of switches here. Hey, Zerif. Thank you. Oh, and actually it's not just the arcs, because we've got these lines too. Ooh, I'm gonna have to identify you as duo lines if we're, use, if we're just using this. <clears throat> Neat. Yeah, I might have to do, do tag something more in the <clears throat> the boon connector here. We'll see. Yeah, I I, I mean I only needed two D, but I was uh, kind of well just, just with those choices. Some of which were essentially two D and three D. <clears throat> Designed for manufacturing. Okay, cool. So that's, prob that's probably actually closer to the CAD stuff I was doing than, you know, 3D models for games or whatever. Well, the good news is I've got this thing, so we could sort of say take this point this arc and draw it twice if we can figure out how to alternate the pattern. Uh, so what if we did zero, zero? Very similar effect, but before it was touching down here, and now it's not. And... <laughs> That's touching down there, so that might actually do it. Now, how do we get both of those on there? Well, I guess for now... So I'm trying to test a two-color thing. Hmm. 
you're a function that takes some parameters. Mm. Yeah, no, by itself, we can't do this here. I could just force something into here. To kind of test things out. So this this thing is going to be a function from a path, I guess. Oh. You're a singular entry. So I should kind of have to do it like this. And we just kind of need something for here. I guess actually we're going to change this, which means we're going to change this. Well, we're not going to modify that. Okay, that has essentially the effect I was looking for. That's a surprising color dot blue, but okay. How do we abstract this? I guess if I arrange this the function from here to this, then I could like do some sort of list flatten operation. Or we could do our own little let block in here and, you know, do like <clears throat> arc A and arc B or something. What do I do with you then? Do I have to turn this into a tuple? Are these done separately? Because link is always going to be charcoal. Uh, oh, and there's a separate set of conditions for 0.1 and 0.2. And there's one condition up there that's 0 0.1. Welcome back. Oh, that follows exactly from the ones that are white. I 
could turn that into some sort of function that applies to arguments. That might be a little too abstract. I guess I could calculate two values and then put them into two values so that wouldn't be as awkward to use because I think we could do I think we could do that. Cool. And we can actually kind of get away without that, but mm. becomes more awkward for every other every other case oops maybe we just maybe we just make up a baseline style that's for that And then this, well, we're going to change color here too, aren't we? We may have to change it in interesting ways. Well, I guess it's only this color that would be essentially replaced. Yeah, this is almost a completely separate thing, so we almost have to do this. I guess the color is going to be the variable part. It would still be charcoal, and it would still be thinner when off. And of course, we haven't looked up, hooked, up, hooked up any logic to when this is on yet. Nor do we really have the data to figure out what colors to use here. All right, so we have got these patterns that are used twice. We've got the thickness and color, I suppose, would be entirely dependent on each god's status, not the active of... Huh, this is almost like we have two arcs with different, uh, one for each god with the, with the opposing patterns. Does that mean that what we actually want here is like duo arc? Pattern. Oh, okay, we might have valid code now. Yeah. Where do we make these? Hmm. For highlighting purposes, it's separate, but in terms of coordinates, we really need kind of all need it once.
So it's that duo boon. And then this thing is pure points. Do we end up associating you with other information? Calculate skip two, calculate skip one, calculate opposite, doesn't use that. We still haven't really dealt with that, those lines yet. <clears throat> Adjacent doesn't have a line. Calculate duo. So let's look at a shape. You get one shape, link nothing. We know these are duo boons. We know we're calculating a shape. Shape, shape. Link something. So link is normally to some sort of prerequisite. We don't currently have a way to define that as a trait that we would highlight. It's got its own trait group. I don't even think it's going to react if I... Don't, yeah, I don't think the, the, these lines ever reacted. <clears throat> so right now that group never lights up because we don't have anything defined for it. If we were to go and define something that was... I guess it would be link. And then how are we doing that? If boon status, or if it is, <clears throat> if it's if that boon status is a boon, active group. I guess we could kind of call that an active group. Set.member ID, where ID is the link. What do I use a group for then? Oh, if, if one thing, if that, uh, an ID in the group becomes active, the group becomes active? Maybe I could set something up in here. Is it something in that stuff? Set dot member ID active groups ID is the link, which we haven't set up a link here. Or I could even have a trait simpler, similar to link that was just for that. <clears throat> I would say if this is lit, then that is done. Now, it would be kind of nice to just automatically do those. In fact, we can just automatically do that if uh, somewhere in our prereq calculations. Uh, 
we can identify groups that are associated with a single god's stuff. There's going to be a few other exceptions to that. So assuming we can identify what? We identify, we probably have to come up with something like trait name, god name, <clears throat> or vice versa. And the thing we're checking under general circumstances is for a link to a boon status or a group status. which means we would want to do two of those under the two different conditions. Uh, does that layout do a boons? Okay. Uh, so far, this has avoided having to break down the duo. Basic boon, duo boon. These are only duo boons, but I don't know what else to do about that. <clears throat> right now, this returns exactly one connector shape. And this is only the shape, which I guess does kind of calculate the same. So we'd have to generate two of those, at which point eh, we're going to generate a shape. <clears throat> this is a connector. Shape link group. So I would have to have some sort of something to identify the A versus B on that. And I guess we could do duo A and duo B. That would mean doing a bunch of kind of heavy recalculation. As we go to draw each of them. Ooh. Our link information is on here too. <clears throat> Which means we kind of have to calculate it twice. I mean, I guess I could go and... I could probably go and pre-calculate this, really. <clears throat> Just have a... Okay, we generate that, and now we're going to pre-calculate the points. But that says we need to do two connectors. And you're only set up for connector. <clears throat> Could a connector type be compound? Not under the current setup, because we need a separate link and the shape is duplicated. I 
I could have a separate length field that would just be empty most of the time. That would imply drawing it twice. I need to know what color to draw it in, though. So does that go back to duo work having that extra information in it? I mean, how could duo arc have? That will turn that into a very complicated type. Although it's got, a, got its own duo arc type. We could have like link A and link B. which would imply the drawing it twice. Mm, that is a shape dependent thing. So this have, in that case, this would have to be done twice essentially. Oh, and that link A, link B also has to include some sort of God identifier from which we can de de determine the color. <clears throat> so we would have to have both, I and mean, it's a duo arc, so we can just kind of assume it's going to be used in that context. And I guess I, you know, that would mean we need a duo line. It almost puts those in an entirely, which almost puts those connectors into an entirely different rendering system. Layout duo boons gives us duo connectors. Metrics has a separate setup for duo connectors. I guess the rest are in the gods. And that's this function. So yeah, so maybe those are just separate. Now that means we're going to have different types. So you're going to be a connector and you would be like a duo connector, which is going to have its own, it's just going to have its own set of shapes. Duo arc is a different arc type. So then we have like duo connector shapes. I mean, line is actually going to be line. The arc is a little bit different. Uh, let's see, this seems like it's likely to be broken for a while. Hmm. If I did that, I could make things separate, but then we'd have to go back and <clears throat> break all this stuff. I 
I could bust out the rendering functions first. Uh, how, how that's gonna play out, we don't know. Oh, actually, invisible is a type of duo connector, essentially. Adjacent. Calculate duo. Hmm. So that's two types that are exclusive. I guess we just could have dual line. Display boon connector. Display duo connector. I guess the interim form of this is we dump you, we dump you. We're gonna end up with a duo line. And then this would not really display duo arcs or invisible. Okay, so that will make maybe some of the other adjustments easier. Maybe, maybe not. Now I could duplicate, just duplicate the type. It's like I'm still gonna have to make all the changes. That would let you swap it into the current use. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's a really slick way to do this. So that's just an alias that would probably even work. <laughs> uh, layout duo boons. So you're going to be duo connector. You're gonna be a duo connector. You have calculate duo. I see that's a connector shape. It's probably gonna turn into a duo connector shape. All right, so the easy thing to do We could just take this, make it a duo connector shape, a duo connector shape, and we can't actually just leave this here because these symbols are all going to collide. Which means I can't leave that there.
calculate arc. Oh, is this? No, this is only calculating duos. And you are going to have to be a duo line just because it's a, just because they're separate types. All right, invisible, you said you were a connector shape. You are a connector shape, connector shape. Okay, and then there's display duo connector, which had line. We had to go, we had to proactively convert that to a duo line. And there's probably no other cases to deal with here. I don't know if I'll complain about that. Yep, redundant. Okay, so we can fully split those. Now. So do a connector, I don't think ever really uses link link. Let's see. So just having like a duo boon type AB would be kind of sufficient. Well, no, we need the trait name. So link is already a trait ID that we depend on. A duo is always going to have exactly one trait ID that it ends up being. <clears throat> It so it has two gods and it has <clears throat> a trait ID that it's involved with, and from that we're probably going to end up manufacturing some some pseudo groups that we have to process as we're going through. So we're going to have, <clears throat> I guess put the requirements in here. So right now, when we're down to the line stuff, we're just doing member tests for the actives. We know this is ultimately going to be one of each sets. So this is boon status. So 
editing is kind of a string. A boon status is active, inactive, or I guess impossible as a thing for a duo boon side. <clears throat> So it could go in boon status, although I think I had made that separate from active groups for some reason. And I guess groups could kind of be impossible. I don't know if I'd mark them differently. I mean, if, if either side of a duo becomes impossible, the entire duo becomes impossible, we can, we can mark it. That's not necessarily an issue. <clears throat> so would we go through and like create groups for all of our duos? Calculate active groups from model active traits and model.traits, which traits includes layout information. Yeah, so right now this is a single folder. Uh, there's a calculate active <laughs> trade status. Okay, fine. <laughs> Trait that trait, boon status, active traits, traits, and then is going to be doing all of this stuff. I don't know if it's something. Yeah, because we have to go through all of this stuff. <clears throat> so if it's a, if we know what's a duo boon. It has to be a one of a, a one of each set. Don't know if that helps us. We still have to go through the map. We actually kind of want. Well, this is this is where we kind of do the god identification thing again. So this might have to be a whole other category of little of metadata that we have to do. So we have to go through all of those sets. We have to determine. There's somewhere that there's a process where we're tagging. Well, these aren't necessarily exposed things. Tag linked god boons. One from each set. Basic boon. <clears throat> doing all of our menus, and then somewhere that turns back into, when there's a one many, 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 turns back into a duo boon. Okay, that, that accumulates it into What's in each set? So this would be we'd identify the type in each set. And if it's one, then that's going to count for that. Oh, God of Set. And oh, there's God Accumulator again. <clears throat> So 
So one from each set, list.map, god of set gods. So we would want to go... It's a shame we can't do this while doing all this junk. I don't know if we're going to be associated with that trait. So we break it into duo boons. This is trace style. Actually, do I use requirements cache anymore? This is available. No. Um, what's our status? We've only touched Boon Chart so far. Okay, we can expose it fine. Although, I guess it's entirely possible we're going to be doing something very, very similar to this. So we can do this just from the straight up data. It's just going to be kind of a deep hierarchical plunge to hit everything. So we'd go through the list of duos we have something that punted on several of the requirements cases because duos really should be one from each set, possibly with more than two sets. <clears throat> For each branch, we would determine if it was single god. That, that's, where, that's probably the biggest place where pre-caching would help a little bit you know, store the requirements and what god it's for in terms of what that means for some sort of activation. But that is just, that is just optimization. And if that set is good, then we, we say it is active for certain god and certain Hmm. So before, 
we had our trait status returns a Oh, this is the thing we update that has the active status of every trait. So that is the, the caching thing. Every time we draw, we can use the pre-calculated status. And that's just a trait ID, so we could potentially map some other stuff in there. Now, you are a singular mapping. You get to a single boon status. Now, it does have, unless the active traits and the trait. The trait does in fact have all this stuff, but for duo boons, we're going to get at least two answers. Uh, you are all traits. So I guess if we did all traits, blah, blah, blah. And there's also the, the group things. And I guess since these are for connectors, we could also call them groups because they can only be active or inactive. This has active traits. And, oh, well, it's traits. So far, we've only needed our basic gods. But the other side of traits is duos. So we're taking da, 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 da. You're doing a full doll for set operations. So if this were to instead of set dot empty start off as the set of things from duos. This only needs the list of duos, I think. And that returns a set layout dot, well, is it a group ID? We're kind of cheating on those. Okay, so duos is a list. I guess this is gonna be list that fold all again. And then you end up being with this the set the set empty? Or I just take both of these and set union them. <laughs> Oh, right, because they had to calculate active groups as well. This is a story yet to be told. But this will do layout.calculate groups, active traits layout.
This is a single trait. And we might actually have something already kind of similar to this. This was, well, no, because it doesn't break things down, but boon status. Active traits, trait. I guess we could sort of short circuit this. Well, right now there's nothing stopping you from highlighting it if it's not available. So you, we can maybe short circuit there. Uh, this is actually going to be something a little bit different. <clears throat> so we only expect this to get calls for duos. A sensible response here would be what? This is a singular set, so we could technically try to do something here. Whatever we do there is going to be basically derivative from what we do here. <clears throat> now this is doing a set dot all. We need to actually be doing <clears throat> some sort of mapping of the sets. Now, this is a list of maps that has to get turned into a set of strings. And there are some, a couple of other little cases I haven't really worked through yet. Uh, on an individual set basis, I guess the set dot enter. Well, I need the set to do the tagging as well. You kind of do two things with it. We need God of set, which might need some further transformation. Although I guess I could. I could list zip these when we're done. And if it is currently active. Oh, if this is only doing the active ones, we could actually just use that as a filter. And then we mapped God of Set. And then we have trait.requirements, so I think it's, I think it's trait.trait. .trait. So it's God of Set. God name.
and then add that. And I say I'm not picky about the order, although I'm going to have to care later. We need to compare it to things. So that means that just to have this work nice, well, is it even a singleton if the list ends up being empty? <laughs> so the simplest way to do this would just be to say, boom. <laughs> since it's never supposed to actually happen here. You could streamline it by just saying like, well, if intersect, then just do this. All right, calculate active duo sets, and then we can either take two things and set union them, which I guess is a better representation of the logic. Oh, except I set this up to pull the duos out before. Well, actually, you only depend on gods. Oop. So then this could become, what are you, a list of god data? Okay, so it's not trait dot trait. Is trait dot trait. Uh, we pulled out a trait here, though. Oh, we didn't change this. <laughs> oh, okay. So you are going to be a stickler about this. Uh, you still get turned into a set. Not sure if we have that. It's probably like an is empty.
Oh, does God upset? Well, yeah, that might make sense. Gods. Which, interestingly enough, is the entire trait set. Well, it's the entire trait set at this level. But you just kind of need that as extra stuff. Or should you go even farther back since you're just kind of... Well, this almost seems so appropriate here. Duo sets. Although I guess it's nice to see both of these go active traits. But then it's active traits, blah. This is just like extra stuff we need. argument is, oh, you're like a special type. Because the answer could be empty, one, or many. So, we have to do this twice. So this is <clears throat> requirement set, active requirement set. So we have a, well, we have a list of God data because we're, we're going to end up passing that to God of Sat. We have some kind of set that is a set of trait IDs that we require. We can do this separate from the active traits check, so we might not need those. We need at least the trait name, if not the entire thing. This is going to be a map of the set, so that should kind of go last. And we're going to return was essentially a... a you really are a singular thing. And then set singleton or set from list is what we could do on top of it. I know I only need your name. Uh, so this gets a lot more complicated now because we have to say da 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 And you are, was it none? Empty. Uh, 
Then you're not a set. I don't really account for that though. This is where we can go dupe do dupe 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 dupe. So if we're not doing a set singleton and this didn't really just become however we want to do this. And many, I guess we just kind of leave it. Now this is going into our group ID. We may eventually be able to figure out some common properties of some common property of these things, but that's not just yet. <clears throat> So I think empty, it accumulates. So if it was truly, there is nothing here <laughs> or it's a non-God ability of some sort. <clears throat> I kind of don't want to put plain old trade in because that may have some other implications. So do I want to either make this a maybe or make it sets that we do something with? <clears throat> well, it's going to be a singleton set if it's anything. I think I could do, if it was a maybe, I could do a filter map. What do I do with you though? Well, a filter map of this function. Yes, and that's that's curried essentially. Active requirement set, gods, trait, set. You're a maybe. Was I saying layout.group ID? I was. <sighs> There's that bull again. Oh, so I want the opposite of this. <laughs> 
و Oh, uh, your pipelines have to be like this. I want to keep flowing. All right, so that's going to activate some extra things. We're interested in. We're kind of interested in what this produces. Is there an easy way to get into this? Yeah, this is kind of a pipeline. Of course, nothing's going to be active yet. Aha. That is exactly what we'd expect out of that. And the other side of this was you. Aries. Oh, no, it was not freaking vortex for you. It was anything else. Was it? Oh, no, it was anything but that. Uh, so, so that was activating some other things. Okay. So we have stationary rift, airy stationary rift. Those are going to be effectively two different highlight effects, so that's a, that's fine. So on the other end of things, display boon connector, we get active groups. Display boon connector. I don't actually think we need this. Actually, we were looking at what what at what the what this structure needs. Uh, so we know now that we have essentially two trait IDs. I guess we could pre-calculate the. The string we're going to be looking for. So these definitely, these are not maybes on connectors. They definitely exist. <clears throat> we could make a little thing that puts together mm, I'd have to know the god colors ahead of time because we don't have god per se here. We have a color, we have a trade ID, I guess we just pick one as A and one as B for the for the dashing. And mm, pulling it out as a function could be useful for having a function to draw things. But I could also just pass that thing to different arguments. Okay, we do have that. Do we have a color? This is going to require a bit of work setting up the duo connector, though. You know what? 
let's leave these in here for minimal breakage. This is still going to affect our construction a little bit. <clears throat> Which is down here. And color a something. Okay. So we already have something going on here. So we could just do something similar to what we got. We now know what some examples of these things are, and the example we've been using is stationary rift. Red and blue actually even work here. Uh, this is display duo connector. All right, so this is no longer, I guess it's still shape. There's gonna be a lot of stuff to pull out though. If we keep doing it this way. So, we Kinda do have to do some stuff on a per per basis. Um, we almost take this. Well, we also have to have the A or the B pattern. Um. Display Duo Connector. So you are checking for its status there. Oh, actually. The connectors don't have boon status per se. I mean, I guess we can, we could take care of that later. All right, so you're going to active groups because we're going to test that. It's not a duo connector. I guess you still have a shape. So it's like now we have all the parts. Oh, and we have to have some way to determine whether you're, which dash pattern you are. And the argument list gets longer and longer. So we're gonna end up doing this both from arc and from line. Hmm. In any given call of this, the color is going to be constant. Uh, 
It's essentially the line thickness that we're figuring out here. But we do have to like do everything twice. And this is not adjust. Case link. It's known to exist. Right, this is member group and member ID. Oh, right, because we had the extra thin lines for things that were linked. If it's active, then this was for a link, which you don't even have. We don't even have that. And this is like the extra small one. Did I, did I, did I have this backwards? And you are going to be color. Oh, actually, we do have some color switching here then. See, that line style is just for, just for the line now, basically. How do we determine... I guess I kind of want to think of this as internal details. So if we're just going to call this twice for every single one... I guess I could just have pattern be an argument and then we define, you know, pattern A and pattern B somewhere. Oh, do we want to try and reuse arc at all? So as this as written, no, actually this is gonna well this is gonna be half.
Actually, yeah, I guess I could make a line style here, couldn't I? And all of this stuff kind of comes down to line style. So I guess we could do like line style A, line style B. Then we don't need shape at all. Line style equals duo dash. Well, we were going to, oh, I almost, no, we were, we're doing this. Do I want to do that? We can change it later. Oh. Uh, false. Active groups. Group, uh, group A and color A. Now, we would actually like to have you run a little let block. So we have arc A. And arc B. And then you, I guess the segment is the same here. This is probably, probably just this sticking in two points in a data structure. They use shape, we pass group A, group B down to that stuff. Hmm. Actually, if we did, well, this builds an entire line style. Right three inline style. 
pattern, thickness. If anything, this should be the more regular indentation. The duo dash definition. Oh, this was this is returning a line style. Ooh, what do I do with you? Grubby. Okay, the fact that I mean, I guess it's kind of cool this dash, but it's not and that appears to be Okay, I guess the they're just ending up in different orders in different places. <laughs> what happened to our dash pattern here? Oh, it worked in the lines. Oh, actually, this isn't being drawn at all. Because we are supposed to be drawing the thinner line here. So it appears to not like something about the way I did this. All right, so is this the raw style? I don't know how to make a like an invisible style. It's gonna make a very thin style or something. Uh, where's all my definitions of stuff? Uniform. Is there something with the dashes? Oh, yeah, there's some definite funny business going on here. We are able to draw all arcs. Well, yeah, I guess we're all able to draw all arcs before. Oh, no. Or arc A. Yeah, because technically it's arc A, arc B. In line style A. So probably shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't be doing... A's and B's for both of these. Almost be cool to have this be dashed at other times. Maybe I'd have to have it like internally dashed when off or something. All right, so next piece. Actually putting actual data in here. So we have trait, we have chart metrics, which I think is going to include enough God information, maybe? I 
Oh, we should be done with these now, though. Yes. Okay, so that's just trade ID. That is the translation of the god. Does the trade know which god it's part of? It's a god data record. Right now it does not. Well, it knows what, no, it, it knows what boon type it is. Oh, what I'm gonna have to look up is the colors. All right, so we know it's a duo boon. So I was thinking I could just wrap this whole thing up. But I'm gonna have to put in dummy values. If I do that. Well, all right, well we know, we basically know this. Uh, what are this? Oh, we got this done to this basic and duo. Cool. I guess I have to fill you into all the things in that case. Uh... So I guess I could do most of this given the god, like god A name and god B name, and then god color. Oh, I need the I need the color and I need the name. We can do most of it from there. And I guess I only need to use them once. So really, I just need to get the god out. Oh, except this has to be A and B. And I can't do quad tuples. I can do it twice. Now this is the trickier part. Because I have a metrics, I don't have a traits. Okay, I got metrics. We have a chart metrics. So traits has a way to, well, I don't know if it has a search for it. Yeah, that, that's given a data, so we don't even have a search. This almost makes me want to have a color cache. Well, I think this is layout and layout should only happen once.
chart metrics, God, and we want a color. Okay, so we have, actually, I think all we need out of here is gods. Gods is an array, because we were thinking we have to do lookups, but in this case, we have an ID. Or rather, I need to do index lookups. Uh, array... Hmm, the filter... Seems like a pretty basic thing. Or it's just too listed. There, okay, there is a filter. It's gonna give me back an array. So we're probably gonna to list anyway at some point. Although I guess we could do that on a, on a smaller list. Uh, well, this is only the filter side of things. All right, so that means it should be as small as it's gonna be. So even if we do this, it's a me. If we do a list two head, <clears throat> and I guess we could we could even just do an array get here. to be kind of the same thing. So now it's a maybe. I was in the middle of something, wasn't I? Yeah. We should just, we should simply never hit this. So the fact that we're doing this twice doesn't bother me too much. Although, oh, oh, actually haven't gotten that. Uh, did I want to pre-string you? Wait, you're a god, no. I think we have that.
what do we what do we do for you? I must have not have imported it. Oh, yeah. Got to something to look it up in. All right, so our original test case. Ooh. This is already telling you things that weren't really obvious before, although I guess I'll eventually have lines going off this way. Oh, actually, there's no dotted lines for this. Which one's going to come down to some of these internal lines? And then these, these will be kind of right here. Which is different than what we get going for there. And I think that Athena is just like an any. Yeah. Uh, so we've got Poseidon, that's just a basic, any basic? Oh, you're going to have the same color, which isn't going to look as good. Oh, that's only on flood shot. And then like any chill. Interesting, you know, which we would see clearer if we said, did, oh, well, I mean, a lot of them are basic. Uh, so if we did just some other basic, oh. Okay, that one goes that way. Oh, this is the, this is like the, yeah, so actually you've got two things that are with Aries also. Which those would be excluded if we had things right. Yeah, so, so there's, there's alternating colors. Uh, any basic? Yeah. Or if we had... Ooh, got a couple of things on here. Because I know, like... You... The only thing that goes to... Is just anything? Yeah. Cold Fusion... Uh, more typical would be, ooh, she not very much. Hmm. So some of this will come through just getting the lines straightened out, but as far as what's actually available, or getting these internal lines straightened out, but I kind of wanted to see if this did anything substantial to my data structures. And so far, it's all just kind of kind of going into here and into our, our active lists. And if we were to tag some of these internal things here, well, that would push some of the dotted line drawing down into these kinds of things, which is its own is its own its own thing. Hmm. Would I want Hmm. 
No, you have to, you're in adjacent, so you're not doing direct dotted lines. Bad example. And I believe you're that one. Huh. Well, we we know what your duo is, and it's probably just, probably just in anything. Oh, that's not a major. So that will eventually connect to this. This is obviously a, a single service line. So I guess the question I had is, would it be useful to extend this pink dotting down here? Uh, the rest of this line is servicing multiple things, so there that has limits. I guess we could we could identify it as blue dotted only, just just say, hey, this is a duo. I guess the main utility of this is going to be if we go down here and we're looking at Dionysus, we can say, hey, there's an incoming line here. Maybe there's something we can do to improve that. Now, another aspect of that might be actually changing how we draw these so that they try to stay in frame. Well, I guess you know, you know this is a duo. There's nothing that really says this is half active. Uh, now, if I wanted to get really fancy, there is kind of a half effect to these. So if I were to go through and catalog which half is half for every icon, we could do some differential availability on there as well. And at scale, these are a little bit blocked out, unfortunately. So I guess you're an example of we're activating it from this side and it's just taking up all the space. And then this will might get end up getting blocked out by Hermes, so all you'll have is this little tail. That might not be great. Oh, I've started to bug log somewhere in traits. We're doing that in individual sets. So uh, one thing we could check, and actually another thing I need to re reset all. And I know that the Zeus Aries, look, that's that's one of them, and that qualifies. But this is still not available because we did not get. one of those. 
So how to represent some of those extra conditions is a, still an unsolved problem. There's not too many of those though. Mm. Now I'm wondering. Okay, so that is not counting as a Zeus thing that's a set for this trait. Right, because the things in the set are not a single god, so it's not going to... It shouldn't be identifying that. And at some point, I have to work on like getting a, a lighter blue for you or something. And and Artemis's proper color. <laughs> no, Athena's proper color. All right, so there are no major data changes to do that. Albeit there's some inefficiencies in the processing. That still doesn't with my connections at all, though. I guess I do have more information about which gods these lines are. I don't know if that helps. I'm not really tracking which point is which. Now, arcs have an A and a B. Those have an A and a B. I could maybe do some implicit things there. Oh, and then there's the implicit sets, like um, this is any any call. And there's a few others that are like that too, but I don't really have any, any representation for those right now. So I might end up having to kind of code in or put the exact positions in here, which means I might want to think about if I want to pull this out because these are overlapping right now. Of course, that kind of gets into a bunch of their size issues too. Well, that's enough for one night. That's what I'm usually on. I've been kind of tired this week. We'll see if the new bed configuration does any better than the last week's. This should be tomorrow morning's project. I guess aligning duo boons is still going to be the thing because I still have to figure out what to, how to do that so I can do, the, do all the lines on the internal diagrams. I'll still figure out what I have to do with Athena. 
because there was a that was a mistake in some of the other charts. But that's it for tonight. Thanks to the support from the subscribers, volunteer and otherwise. Good night, and until next time.